Hello, hello, hello. Hey everybody, it's 7.03. I'm running a little bit late. Tonight we're going to uh, do the second part. So last night we were here, we epoxied, Loctite, and Mod Podged our tumblers. So we let them rest overnight. We let them dry so that we can epoxy the first layer tonight with everybody. So I'm gonna wait till a couple more people. I see a couple of people jump on, say hello, so I know who all's here. Hey, Nanette, nice to see you. Sorry, I'm kind of out of breath. Shouldn't be. Um, let me get rid of myself because I've actually been up here working and doing a couple of other things. I want to show you all these pretty tumblers that we glittered last night that actually, thank you, thank you, Rachel, that we actually, um, so just to repeat, I apologize. If you don't see the live button, we're no longer live, but I want to thank you all for joining me. This is night two, day two, night two of, of doing a tumbler. I've been doing some patina, guys, earlier. So last night we did three different ways to glitter a tumbler. We did the epoxy method, the Loctite method, and the Mod Podge method. So this cup was our epoxy. This is our new color. We're still trying to find a name for it. It's so beautiful. There's nothing compares to this, nothing. Guys, there's nothing that compares to this white. I don't know. Um, so we're still trying to find a name. This will be on our website, myglitteraddiction.com this weekend. This is another new one we have. We just did. Ow, let me get it for you guys. This one is our green in that beautiful color. I know it's kind of, can't really tell it with the lighting, but we did the Loctite with this cup. And guys, can you really tell a difference? Once we get the epoxy on these, you really won't be able to tell the difference. And then the last thing we did, except I crunched it. So the last one we did, we did this one by Mod Podge. This is our rainbow holographic series. So we've got three cups we're gonna do epoxy on tonight for the first layer of epoxy. Then tomorrow night we're gonna come on and um, we're going to show you how to clean the rims, um, do maybe a water slide, a label, something on them. I don't know. And then apply a, 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 a thin layer of, of epoxy so that y'all can see how to do a cup from start to finish. For those of you that followed along, I hope you brought your cups tonight. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> thanks Shelby. So what I'm going to do, let me catch my breath here. Sorry. I've been running and working. Um, so what I'm going to do tonight is just epoxy all three. I'm going to flood coat them. Flood coat them. There's two different ways you can do a flood coat. You can apply a thin layer, wait about three to four hours, and then do a flood coat. A flood coat is a large amount of epoxy at one time that um, helps from having to do all the layers. You only have to apply this really large coat on it. It helps cover the bumps you know, um, any imperfections, any bubbles that come up on the thin layer. I'm a believer of doing a flood coat right away. I think it's a waste of time to put a small thin layer on and then do a flood coat. To me, just go ahead and let's just get this over with. When I'm doing the epoxy method with my glitter tumblers, I may wait two to three hours and do my flood coat then. So there really isn't much of a wait time when you do the Loctite method or the epoxy method when you do your glitter. You can do your flood coat pretty much right away. With the Mod Podge, you have to let it, at least let it dry overnight, 24 hours. That way you can make sure the Mod Podge is dried and doesn't get moldy or mildewy underneath the um, epoxy when you put the epoxy on there. If you don't wait and you epoxy it, later on down the line, you're going to see how the Mod Podge is going to seep through and it starts to turn white. It looks like you've got glue underneath the epoxy on your Mod Podge cups. So be very careful about that. Hey, Alicia. Alicia, so when I do my flood coats, I do basically 
the total cc's or ml's of your epoxy. If you remember last night, cc's equals ml's. When I mix my epoxy, I kind of double the size of my cup. So if I'm doing a 32 ounce tumbler, I'm going to mix total about 60 cc's of epoxy. 30 apart A and 30 apart B. Hey Tabitha. It's just a standard with me. Um, one thing, I'm kind of half blind, so it's hard for me to measure. So it's basically one cup of this and one cup of this. Part A and part B, mix it together and that helps keep up your flood coat. Now if I have a 20 ounce skinny, I'm lazy, I'll still do one cup of this and one cup of this just because I don't have to measure the lines. And if I have any extra, I will um, use it for a keychain, a mold, for whatever else. Shelby, let us get with you um, after this live with your Loctite. Your Loctite can get clumpy. That was the first thing that whenever I started doing my tumblers. Shelby Long's question is her tumbler, after she did the Loctite, she thinks she used too much spraying on there. My very first tumbler when I did it, I did Loctite method, and I think it just globbed on there. I wasn't used to learning how to spray paint my cups to prime them. And if you're not good at using spray paint, it takes a little bit of a learning curve. So that's why I turned to the epoxy method because it just was so much easier for me to do. Once I got a hold of learning how to spray paint and prime my cups, then I went back to using the Loctite and it was nothing. So maybe I'll do a live or a video of how to spray paint your cups so you can see how I do it and maybe make it a little bit easier for you so the next time. I would love for you to try the epoxy method, Shelby, or even the Bod Podge and to just give you that confidence. Don't let Tumblr making scare you. Try anything. Who cares if nobody likes it? Who cares if it turns out ugly? Because you know what? I've seen some ugly cups, but then I turn around and people tell me, oh God, that's beautiful. So beauty is truly in the eye of the beholder. So we'll get with you. We want you to succeed at this. We don't want you to be buying glitter and have it sitting around, though it is kind of pretty to look at. So why don't we go ahead and get started. I've already kind of mixed my part A and part B and let it set there. I know you can't really see this and there's kind of bubbles at the top. The reason why I have so many bubbles, I think, in my mix is because Mr. Glitter was in here working and he likes the air conditioner like 62 degrees, it's freezing, so my epoxy doesn't like it. So it's kind of cloudy. I know you can't see that, but um, let's get started on this. So I'm going to do the red cup first. That was our Mod Podge. My cups aren't sealed. Some people, after they glitter them, will seal them with um, clear spray paint, the clear. So the only reason why I didn't is I don't care if my glitter moves. The reason why you seal something is to, so the glitter doesn't move from one color to the next if you have like two colors or three colors on your cup. Or if you're using alcohol inks or have like a really intricate design. When I'm using a single color glitter, I don't seal mine. Some people just do. Again, it's your preference. So let me go ahead and switch over. So let me go ahead and switch you guys over. I'm using um, Faux Grizzle UV, and in a minute I'm going to pull out on my last one, I'm going to pull out the Faux Rizzle Nouveau, and let's see how thick it is, all that kind of stuff, because I'm curious because I haven't used it yet. But I'm going to, I use Faux Rizzle UV, so I've already mixed my 30 cc's of Part A and Part B, and you can kind of see how in here it's really kind of cloudy, but it will turn glass light on your tumbler. My, um... Turner I use is by Cuposaurus. It was the first one I ever did. This is our red um, holo of the holographic series. It's gorgeous, isn't it? We have some colors that hardly anybody uses, and I just think because we have so many great colors that they get kind of lost in the shuffle. This is one in the pink holographic that um, Bunny did one day. It's in a picture in our VIP group. If you want to join us in our VIP group, it's My Glitter Addiction VIPs, where some of the girls are doing these cups. They y'all do amazing work. So to do epoxy, when you do a flood coat, I want people to understand, and I hope you can see my hand. When you're doing a flood coat, you're putting your epoxy on here. Your hand never actually touches the cup like it is right now. When you're doing your epoxy, you never really want to touch or feel the cup. You want to help move the epoxy over the cup. And that's why I've kind of got you at an angle so you can see where my hand is 
when I'm doing it. Um, okay, you all ready to get started? You're gonna be like, what? A flight coat is really putting on a whole bunch of it and just catching it and letting it go across your cup. Do you see how I'm doing that? I'm not really touching it until my hand starts to touch the cup. Then I'll go back down and pick a little bit more up. I pour more on. I can feel my epoxy. I probably let it sit there a little bit too long because it's starting to get warm. But see how I don't even really touch the cup? It's getting a nice thick layer on it. And then I start working it around. Take your time with this, guys. People are like, well, you only have so long to work with it. Take your time. I wanted to get this one going before I, sh then I'll show you how I mix my epoxy next time on the next cup. But we've got three chances tonight, and I think three times we can really show you instead of getting off of here so quickly. But I'm really just moving my epoxy around and pushing it to where I need it to go. It's not really a thin layer. It kind of just starts to settle where it wants to. That's why you're using a turner because the epoxy is self-leveling. While I'm doing this, guys, I may not be able to see your questions or your comments. We have several wonderful moderators from the VIP group in here, so be sure and ask, ask away, guys. And I hope you're following along. I hope maybe you don't do your following along with this one. You're kind of watching what I'm doing. And then on the next cup, when I start to do this, you follow along. And then the third time, just watch again. So I hope you're just watching on this cup, and then the next one, we'll do it together. So I kind of get my cup all covered. And then once I get it covered, you get all your edges, make sure and wait till it goes all the way around, and make sure you just kind of push it all the way up to the edge. On both sides. And as you're doing it, once you have a whole bunch of glitter, you're going to kind of push it over the edge down here and let it fall over the edge. And once it does, it'll start covering up your bottom for you. See how I kind of do that doing that? And if you've kind of noticed, there's nothing down here that's really dripping. Can everybody hear me okay? Thank you very much. Guys, I forgot my butane torch and Mr. Glitter had to bring it all the way to the shop, so. Love you, bye. He really hates being on camera. <laughs> but see how fast that was? Even though it's kind of, it seems like it's fast for me, and I've already done my bottom, Can y'all see okay? I can lighten it up. I can bring a light over here if I need to. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer for you guys. What do y'all think? And I have about maybe 10 cc's left in my cup. This could make, uh, I keep this around in case I need to add a little more or whatever. The one thing about a flood coat when you're putting it on, guys, is you never put enough on that it starts dripping off either side of your edge. It may do that and that's okay. Then that's when you need to stop and start moving your epoxy around. If you don't and you put and let it keep dripping off the edges, that's when you're going to start seeing the bubble, the you know, like a buildup of a hump or something towards the end, like a big bubble all the way around. It's because it has just a little bit too much of epoxy and it's needing to self-level. The way I've already learned to tell is that if the epoxy is falling off, it means I just have a little bit too much. So I'll just come along and I may just grab some and put it back in my cup. Drop it off the edge and put it back in my cup. So we're going to let this one spin for a minute. The bottom side, 
Tabitha, what I do is I let my, my when I'm doing my um, blood coat, I usually let my epoxy set for a minute and thicken up more than a little bit than normal. I don't do my bottom till last because by that time you have epoxy and you're moving it down, it's thick enough it's not going to fall off. It's going to grab your bottom. And I'll really concentrate on the next one so I can show you what I'm talking about. But if you let it thicken like I did before y'all came on, it was easy for me to um, be a little bit thicker and move it and it didn't drip. That's also what I like about faux rizzle. Faux rizzle is a thicker epoxy. Once it's mixed, it's aluminum a lot thinner. And I like being able to have that control of that. But in this cup gorgeous, I'm seeing areas that I wish I would have glittered better. But if I hadn't spray painted this cup red, you all probably would have been able you probably would have seen the white coming through. But it's still pretty. I can probably go back over this and put if you have an area like that, put a uh, label or um, a water slide on it. There's always ways to fix your cups, guys. Always. So what I do next is I go ahead and let it spin just a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I use a butane torch. Let me come, let me go away, go back up. Organ. I use a butane torch. This one I bought on eBay, not eBay, Amazon for like 10 bucks. Trying to get it more. There we go. For about $10. And if you have bubbles on your tumbler due to the epoxy, you want to use a torch to pop those bubbles. If you're using a heat gun, it's not going to pop those bubbles you're going to think it is, but all it's doing is thinning the epoxy and moving stuff around. You're going to have more bubbles using a heat gun than you would if you were using a torch. So get you a torch now if you're going to use any of the faux rizzles, any of those uh, pro marine, because you're definitely going to need it. I started out using the heat gun and couldn't figure out why it was always getting bu bubbles. When I started using this, it stopped. So just to get it going, I go ahead and turn it on and I just run it over real fast. I do it one full turn. Now if you put too much heat on it in one place, the epoxy will thin and it'll run off. And that's where you also will start getting your fish eyes. If you do it too much, you'll start seeing smoke come up from your epoxy. It'll cause fish eyes. But this also will bring some more gases. I can see a bubble right there. Y'all probably like, what? she's crazy. Your flood coat is supposed to help you with fish eyes or the bumps and stuff. And tomorrow when we come in, if this is not fully smooth. We'll have to sand it down. We'll put another thin coat on. Um, but normally when you do your flood coats, it should be good to go to do whatever you need to with it. But not everything's perfect. It doesn't always turn out that way. That's a good idea, Shauna. Shauna says that what she does is she lets her epoxy thicken up and then um, use a popsicle stick to put on the edges. It's a pretty red. So I'm going to move this one over to the other side because I have my turner has um, arms on both sides of it. I'm going to come back and we're going. I'm going to show you how I mix my epoxy. And you'll be like, why is she using a knife? Well, dummy me last night took home all my supplies. And I'm using a knife that's going to turn into a stirrer. So... Let's get going for the next one here. I'm gonna go ahead and switch you over so you can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna leave this spinning at least four hours, four to six hours. I 
leave my cups on my turner. I usually do my epoxy late at night, like 9 or 10, and let them spin all night long. And when I wake up, um, they're already um, hardened enough to, to mess with. I find that if I do that, I don't have a tendency to touch to see is it, you know, and, and have fingerprints or leave, you know, big pockets of semi-hardened epoxy. Another trick I was taught was take a little bit of your epoxy and put it on your, on here and touch that instead. So if you touch it, you know it's still wet because if it's still wet here, it's going to be still wet there. And I found that works really well. When I move my cup here, you're going to see that there's hardly any epoxy except for when I was pushing it off the edges up here. Hang on just one second. We'll get this one going. This is what I do too, is I do this all the time. I usually work with one side of my cups, my turner. It's just a habit I have. I miss green gorgeous guys. So pretty. You're touched, Kai. Uh, you said it. We didn't, girl. Sorry, I'm cleaning up my hands here. I love this green, guys. Is that not the prettiest green you've ever seen? I'm definitely going to have this on the website by this weekend. This is called, this one we named Pistachio. Uh, I forget, I think Shelby named that last night. I know, I love this glitter. I think this series is the best my suppliers ever came out with. And we got in eight new glitters today. I'm not going to show y'all, but we got in eight new glitters. And we'll do a big reveal with those two and ask you to help me with the names as well. Okay. So this is a 32 ounce modern curve cup. So I'm going to do 60 total cc's. I put my epoxy in my FIFO bottles. So all I do is fill them all the way up because I'm blind as a bat and then when you get old like me it's a little difficult to see what you're doing on the last cup we're going to try the Nouveau and see how it looks the faux rizzle the brand new one that come out that with no VOCs it's supposed to be help you people with allergies help with um, allergic reactions some people do have allergic reactions to this. So y'all please, please, please use your personal protective equipment. Whether you use a mask, a respirator, gloves. But what I ask, I do ask of you guys is that if you choose not to use any or somebody else is not doing it the way you do it, to each his own guys. Please don't harass if somebody's doing it without the gloves on or they're not wearing a mask to each his own. Everybody learns and does what they want. It's because I can't see, Alicia. Seriously. Cannot see. Should have some music going. Uh. So what I do is I turn around and put it in another cup. So I usually put the thin in first, and no, I won't be using this knife to eat with. I'm sure I'll get some reviews about that. But hey, to each his own. Then I'm going to put the, the thick in, and we're just going to mix. We're going to mix for about three minutes until it's all mixed, and we're going to mix slow. We're just going to sit here and just mix. And keep mixing. Good idea, Darla. So we're just going to keep mixing. And notice I have not picked up my knife out of my cup. A lot of people worry about bubbles. 
I don't really care about it or not or bubbles because I know I'm gonna pop them with my torch so some people are like oh my god that's too many bubbles guys that's hardly any bubbles it's not that big of a deal really if you can start without getting bubbles in it good for you I've never been able to well I'll take that back I've only been able when the temperature of the room is perfect like 72 74 I could sit there and stir while I'm watching TV and it is it comes out nice and no bubbles but epoxy is naturally going to create bubbles when it mixes I use a metal stir stick at home I had one last night uh, I find that it uses less bubbles than say a popsicle stick or a silicone stick because a popsicle stick is more porous While I'm mixing, I'm also scraping the sides because the thicker part, I think it's part A, likes to stick to the sides. If you put epoxy on your cup and you wake up the next morning and it's still sticky, your measurements were off. Straight and simple. If you wake up the next morning um, and some of it's sticky and some of it's not, the reason some of this is uh, your, your measurements were off. Or... You can do like I did and mix two part A's instead of a part A and a part B or two part B's. Famous for that. That's why Hannah has got everything I have marked so I can see it with, with or without my glasses on. If you spray with alcohol, some people do use alcohol. It needs to be 91% because the lower concentrations have water in them and water, it all repels epoxy. It needs to be a fine mist. It can't be where part of the droplets are really thick. A lot of people use it when they're doing like the bigger flat thing, flat, flat, I can't think of the name of it. Like tabletops, when they're doing epoxy on top of tabletops, it's easier to use the, um, Spray with a fine mist, so make sure if you're going to try that, do it on a test cup first so you can get used to doing it. Do not do it on a cup you're going to be giving somebody. Because I'd hate for you to mess up what you're doing. And baby wipes are my friend. I think I use more baby wipes than when Hannah and them were babies now than I ever did before. I love these silicone mats. They just clean right up like this, guys, with a baby wipe. Get all the glitter off of them just with a baby wipe. How neat is that? I'm gonna push you back just a little, or push this over just a little bit. Guys, if y'all saw my strip pile, a strip pile for the new for the new ones on this is cups that you messed up and that you can actually strip these and redo them again. I'm just too lazy. So I have a bigger strip pile than a keep pile. Whatever you do, whenever you do try a new technique, always make sure you do it on a test cup first. That way, um, if you're trying new tech for a customer or something, you don't stress out trying to get that um, customer their cup because it never fails it's going to be the one cup that's going to be the easiest to do and you're going to have to redo it three or four times it's just the law of uh what do they call that something's law can't think of the name of it murphy's law remind me to show you how to do the edge the bottom again i'll go a little bit slower so i can show you how to do my bottom The epoxy I'm using again is Faux Rizzle UV. We do sell it here at My Glitter Addiction. I sell samples of it so that um, if you're new to using different kinds of epoxy, I don't want you to spend all your money on epoxy and you wind up either being allergic to it or not liking it. So, you know what? Let me skip this back over here because I want to show y'all how to do this part of it 
and then we'll go back to doing the bottom since that's the last thing I do. Okay, we good? So, remember I said that we're not going to touch the cup. When I put this epoxy on, the epoxy is the only thing that's going to be touching the cup. I know you're like, how is she going to do that? So I, put a, I dump a big dump on it, and then I catch it. And then I just push it over. My hand never touches the cup flat, like it never actually touches the glitter. Maybe that's a better word. And once it starts to touch the glitter, I lift up and I put more epoxy on. And just push the epoxy where I want it to go. And then sometimes I just let it set there and let it go around. Because epoxy is self-leveling, like I said, and it's going to go where it wants to go. And you're just there to kind of guide it. See how I'm pushing it up? It's a little bit different than putting it on for the epoxy method of your glitter. I know I'm going to wait for it to come back around. Because I want to get the edge of it. And you can put your hand there and it'll start pooling up a little bit. Because I can see right here where there's no epoxy. So we're going to put a big dump there. And we're going to just let it come up. Grab that edge. So really I'm not even touching the glitter, guys. It's just gliding right along the top of the cup. I want to do another big dump down here and start the bottom side of it. That is such a pretty, pretty green. I don't know about y'all, but I could stand here and sit here and look at this stuff all day long. Look at this glitter. I work a full-time job. I'm a medical biller, but I sit there at work and I'm just wishing I could be here playing with glitter all day. One day. So as soon as I get off work, I rush home so I can come play with glitter or play on Facebook and talk to you guys. See, I still have quite a bit of epoxy left. And I'm going to let this one set here just for a little bit and let it thicken up. And then we're going to work on the bottoms. So I'm going to really concentrate on the top. I'm going to start pushing this glitter, pushing the glitter, pushing this epoxy up there using one motion. I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm going to move it up. Now, if I really wanted to, I can come back and go down. But don't sit there and rub back and forth. That's going to create bubbles. Can y'all see okay? Get a little quiet there. So what I do now is I come and just drag, just a little bit. I drag, if there's any extra, and let it fall off the end of the cup. Again, I don't fill the cup of the glitter underneath me. I'm just moving with extra epoxy on And take your time, like I said, guys. Play with it until you feel comfortable with it. Let the glitter fall off the edge of the cup. Trying to think what I could do with this cup if I was making it for me. What would y'all want to put on this cup if y'all were using this color? What would be a good cup? I'm thinking somehow like an ice cream cup. You know, do the bottom in an ice cream cone and then do the top in like lime. This pistachio, make a pistachio ice cream cone. 
What other color, what other things could you use this green for? Katie, this is our second night of doing this. Last night we glittered the cups. Tonight we're just doing the epoxy layer. And then tomorrow night we're going to clean up the edge, put on a water slide, put on another layer of epoxy so we can do a cup start to finish. So this is really our second night of doing this. Um, I post these videos in our VIP room, but I also have started to create a, a YouTube page. So you have to get through all the talking. Um, so this is night two. So it's also going to be in our YouTube page. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I do the bottom so you can see. Let's hope I don't drop my camera in the... That'd be horrible. Mr. Glitter would get me. Okay, so normally I pour a little bit on here, like this, after it's gotten thicker, and then I just push it over the edge. And this is where it's okay for it to drip just a little bit. Then I take it and I push it over the edge. I take it and I push it over the edge. This way your edges don't get thin. And then I take it and I just rub it in here. Just start rubbing it. Rub it really softly so it covers all the glitter. See how it kind of pulls a little bit? That just tells you you have just a little bit too much. So we're going to let it pull. Then we're going to pull it down. And then you can brush it back up to be to thin it back out. So then I come around on the side just to get the extra and I just wipe it off. See how you can see how it's kind of pulling right here and right here after I've done that? Just come back up and just swipe over it real quick and then wipe it off. And then I come right here on the edge. Get the extra and wipe it off. This way you don't have this bubble butt on the end when you, or bubble bottom. And if it leaves, if the epoxy kind of pulls away from it after you've done your flood coat the next morning, it's okay. Because remember, we're going to sand a little bit. We're going to put a water slide or a decal on it. And then we're going to do another layer of epoxy. So it's still going to be okay. You just want to get this covered and get it working so that you've got some type of protection on that bottom. So that you can build it up, if that makes sense. The glitters coming off on my hands is because I don't seal my single cup, my single colored glitter cups. So you're going to get a little bit of it. It's going to look more than what it really is because see how much there is on the cup. This was done by the Loctite method. So sometimes whenever you do something other than epoxy where it's going to harden, Loctite will kind of come up. And if you want, you can spray it with clear sealer and then epoxy it. I just feel like spraying with clear sealer is a waste because it's not really sealing it. It's sealing the glitter to the cup, but I'm putting, it's personal preference. I could talk all day long, but it's personal preference. Now, if I had two different colors, I would have sealed it with a clear um, spray, Rust-Oleum, so that I wouldn't have moved the green up to another color or vice versa. Or if you're doing ombres, you want to seal it really good before you epoxy because you don't want your, your glitters miss the shifting. If that makes sense. So this one again is looks pretty good. I'm gonna let it spin just for a little bit, and then I will um, torch it to make sure I get any bubbles that I can't see. And the part you probably won't see later on is that I will wait about an hour or two and I'll come back and torch it again. Just to pop anything that kind of rises because epoxy, when it cures, releases a gas. 
that's how it gets hardened. It releases the grass when it's combined, and the bubbles are the gases being released. Sometimes people get lucky and they never have bubbles. Sometimes tons of people have lots of bubbles. Do y'all have any question? So what do y'all think so far? Probably, you know, this is going to get, this is going to get an epoxy somewhere. So now I've got to move some stuff so I can move it on the other side of my turner so we can do the white one. Right now it's getting warm in here because I got the heater on. Probably bad move. Bad move. Yes, Alicia, we are. <laughs> um, these cups for the ladies once we're finished, we're gonna raffle these off in our VIP group just for participating. Um I may come up with three questions from each one from each night of stuff that we've done. So you can go back and watch our lives either in the VIP group or you can watch them on YouTube. Yeah, my glitter addiction has a YouTube. Can y'all believe that? We're moving right up. So it's just a fast. You don't want to stay in any one spot at one time. Because you don't want to burn your epoxy. You don't want to create fish eyes. Okay, we're probably doing, I think we're maybe do a three to three night live again at once a month so that we, we can all continually learn. I learn new tips all the time. Hannah is excited to do a Hannah marble tumbler with you guys. If y'all don't know, Hannah is the owner of my glitter addiction. She's my daughter, my 16 year old little Tinkerbell. I gotta get my foam resin nouveau up here. I'll need those tomorrow. Do I have any questions? I know it's kind of boring. Sorry. I'm going to move this cup over to the other side of my turner so that we can do this pretty white one that we can't even, we can't even, what do we call it? I can't agree on a name because it's so pretty. Super, super pretty and we can't even come up with a name. Yeah, I've heard, Hannah's already working on it. She had a test for tomorrow and a project due, or she'd be here tonight. So we'll get her to give you all a list of that, the exact colors that she's using for her marble. That way, um, it'll make it easier for y'all if you want to follow along, or you can get something similar. So I'm going to be using the new Forizzle Nouveau. I haven't used it yet. So we're going to find out together how it works. I know, so many glitters. Lots of glitters. Lots of craziness. If I didn't know better, Mr. Glitter coming home with glitter on him every day, I'd think he'd been at the strip club. <laughs> so. Pearlicious? Yeah. So we're going to try these. 
Joy's already tried these. Joy, what do you think about these? A trick to keep them on? Yeah, I got a trick. It is called Foamtastic from Cuposaurus. My cups never fall off. They don't vibrate off. They don't do anything. The only time it's ever fallen off is because I forgot to, to attach my thumb screw to the turner. But it goes right in the top of the cup. Let me do this here. It goes right in the top of the cup. These things fit anything. So you just pop it in, push it down, make sure it's all flat. That's it. I love my foam tastic. I have tried the spinning. I don't care much for it. So. Oh. Okay. So now I'm going to work on this. So I'm going to turn you over here. I'm going to pull this up just for a second. We're going to pour Part A. Part A should be thick. It's not too bad. Not too terribly bad. There's supposed to be no smell. I don't think faux rizzle has a smell. To me, anyway. And this is part B. Part B is normally a thinner on other epoxies. It's the same. They're exactly almost the same. It's a little bit thinner, maybe just slightly thinner than part A. They're both clear. They both have the same UV rating as Faux Rizzle UV. Let's see how they mix. Put them in the cup. I'm going to get some music going next time. No, I can't smell it. I can't smell it. Let me mix them together. Sometimes when you mix them together, they have a chem they're supposed to have a chemical reaction. And maybe it'll have a smell. Joy says she can smell it. This is the first time I'm using it. I'm curious. All I'm smelling is baby, baby wipes. We'll keep stirring it. Y'all know my glitter addiction is giving away a seven cup turner this month. All you have to do is make a purchase, and once you make a purchase, you're entered to win a seven cup turner. I like how clear it is. But Alicia, would you tell them there's no VOCs? What is it all about? Um, faux Rizzle? No Vaux? That everybody's yelling about? Faux Rizzle Novo. N O U V E A U. I can't smell it. I don't smell anything. It's super clear, guys. It's the only thing that's on is my bubbles. Guys, this is my art and craft stick here. It's not my knife that I eat with. So. No VOCs and no BPA. Supposedly the stuff that causes people to be allergic to it.
think the VOCs are what causes people to have allergic reactions to the odors and to the other. Yeah, it's supposed to be 30% harder. Well, that was really stupid, Davia. I'm going to have epoxy all over my table. I need to get, um, what do you call it? I need to get stock in baby wipes. Yes, Ashley, all you guys have to do is per make a purchase at myglitteraddiction.com. And then you're entered to win the seven cup turner is by Glenn Trotty, all hand carved. We're going to um, go live on December the 6th and raffle it off. Not raffle it off, we're going to give it away. Uh, the seven cup turner is not affiliated with Facebook or Instagram, YouTube, nothing. This is something that my glitter addiction is doing to give back to our customers because we appreciate you guys so much. Last month we gave away uh, a brand new Cricut Maker. Next month we have something even better for you guys. We're probably going to do something with the 12 days of Christmas. I, have, I love going shopping for you guys. It's exciting. Right, this is non hazmat, so that's even better. Because every time I sell the faux rizzle here, I have to tell the UPS and pay a little extra that I'm shipping chemicals. I'm getting a lot of bubbles because it's cold in here. I'm probably stirring it too fast or and made it cloudy. Alicia Gill knows what I'm giving away in December. She's not one of my admins, so my admins know. And my admins are included in the giveaways, guys. Because they admin and moderate our group, they're not paid whatsoever. They are just supporters of Hannah and my glitter addiction and our mission and what we do. So our moderators do this for the love of Hannah and glitter. Our admins are not, what do you call them? Reimbursed in any way, shape, or form. I think I need to quit stirring that sucker. All I'm doing is giving bubbles in it. And plus I start talking too much. So here is our pretty white. Guys, I wish y'all could be here in person with me. I'm going to have to get my moderators and admins up here. I have one that lives, a moderator that lives about an hour, 45 minutes from me, I drive by her house and I still haven't seen her, except for a couple of times. Pour it in another cup and let it sit. I can do that. Yep, Alicia, it's your color, girl. This reminds me of a wedding dress. Hannah said it doesn't because she doesn't want to ever get married, she says. But it reminds me of a wedding dress. Is that not pretty? And that's not special effects. The, um, this series comes in a white, green, blue, orange, pink, red, purple, yellow. I know, wouldn't that be pretty? Wedding bells. That's a good name, wedding bells. We should use that. We know, didn't come up with that. Doesn't it look like wedding bells, like wedding glitter? I like wedding bells. That's pretty. Aww. The funny thing about this story about this glitter while this stuff is setting up is I have been looking for this glitter probably for over six months and I keep getting 
my distributors to mix it and it's never been quite right. We tried mixing it here. This was sitting in our office for about two days and I didn't realize it was here. Then I pulled it out, or actually Hannah pulled it out and knew exactly what it was the minute she saw it. And she didn't even tell me. You did, Courtney? Awesome. We will be bottling up this little sugar, this little dandy here, and we'll have it on the website. I'll make a big announcement in our in the VIP group that it's on the website. Right now, we'll only have bottles just because our bagging machine is down. But um, yeah, and it's, I think it's real. It's very affordable. It's five twenty five a bag, or it is um, six fifty in bottles. Well, Courtney, if we decide on wedding bells, we'll get you a free two ounce of this, baby. This pretty color. She did, Alicia. She knew she was going to make your whole day. Are we ready to epoxy this, baby? If y'all are wondering where I get my silicone mats, we have them here also at My Glitter Addiction. They're kind of pretty. We're working on getting aprons that say Glitter Addict on them because I'm forever getting epoxy and glitter on my clothes. Let's get to it. Y'all ready? So again, we're not going to touch the cup. We're only going to touch the epoxy and help it move. We're going to move it around. This gorgeous color. And then we're going to bring it down because I had a little bit too much. I'm just moving it. Just moving it, moving it, moving it. And you can see where there's no epoxy. And you're just going to move it around. Just take your time with it. I find this honestly very relaxing. Just sitting there just watching it ebb and flow. It goes on the same as the other faux, faux Rizzle UV. I don't feel a difference. Guys, I'm curious as to see what it's going to look like on the cup. Remember, this cup, was we used epoxy to put on the glitter on this cup. So when I rub my hands over it, I can feel like there's some no epoxy up here at the top. So sometimes I'll stick my finger in there and just push it. Tomorrow, guys, I'll show you how I clean my rims with my Dremel. I'm all about doing the hard stuff easy. Oh, I'm sorry. See, I've got a bad habit of doing that. I'll sit there and hold it like that in the way. I apologize. If I'm doing something, it's because I've been conditioned myself to do it that way. I'm working it down to the bottom. Guys, this color is so pretty. I'm still in love with the green though. Guys, 
This whole time I've never touched the cup. I, if you can see, I hardly have any glitter on my hands. Isn't that crazy? When you're running your hands through this, this is done by the epoxy method. The glitter is really set. I'm gonna push it all the way to the top. Do it in one motion. All the way to the top, pick your hand up, come back down. Don't be going back and forth. It creates bubbles. Pick your hand up, come back. Then if you want, you can stop and go back the other way. But always pick your hand up. I really can't smell it though. It depends on which, let it set there, Gina. It depends on, are you using faux rizzle too? That's why I got those mods there. So tomorrow night we're going to have these should be cured by tomorrow night. They're going to spin for about four hours here at the shop. Um, I'm going to come in tomorrow and get the water slides and the decals ready for them. And we'll come in and put the decals and water slides on them. We'll clean the rims and we'll get them ready for the next layer. The last should be the last layer or two of epoxy. Yeah. So guys, that is the flood coats. If you notice them, I use 30 cc's of each A and B. Um, mix them together, put one big huge coat on each cup that we did tonight. I'm gonna let them spin for about four hours. Um, they all got, they're all gonna get torched right after I do the first part of it. Then about two hours, I'm gonna stay for about two hours and then I'm gonna torch them again to make sure I get any bubbles. So when I come tomorrow for our next live tomorrow night at seven, we'll be ready to move on to the next step. This way you'll have time to practice if you want. Um, and remember these videos will be in our VIP group. They'll also be on our YouTube channel. You'll have to like fast, fast forward through all the talking. That's why I wanted to do three cups tonight so you could see the same technique over and over again. If I was doing all three of these cups, I would probably mix a whole big batch of epoxy and do all three of them at the same time instead of stopping, stirring, stopping, and stirring. But I wouldn't recommend anybody doing that until they get some practice in and getting used to the epoxy that they like to use. Um, faux Rizzle, if that's the epoxy I was using, it loves heat. It loves the temperature about 72 degrees. So I'm going to get off here now. If you want to continue this conversation, join us in our VIP group. We can go start a, a blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we can start a chat there, a thread there where we can answer questions. Um, but um, I'd love to see you guys tomorrow night, and let's see what you did. If you're following along and you put your your flood coat on your cut from last night, be sure and share those pictures. And remember, guys, we're going to raffle. We're going to give away these cups. We're not going to raffle them off. We're going to give away these three cups um, tomorrow night in our group. So y'all have a good evening, okay? I'll see y'all soon.